Steve, welcome to Forest Green Rovers. Great to have you here. Thank you. How's it feel? Yeah, good. It's been really busy. Um, a few sleepless nights. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously into it today and meeting the boys is... Uh, uh, that's the first part of it, if you know what I mean. So uh, the beginning is always um, is always a good bit, anyway, because it's uh, it's all fresh, it's all new. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <clears throat> Why for Rovers? Why does it appeal to you? To be honest, after a couple of chats with the chairman, I mean, it's um, I think it's a it's a really good project that he wants to fulfil. Uh, I think. Even by his, his his own words, it hasn't quite gone as, as he would have hoped uh, over a, a period of time now, um, which is obviously disappointing. But I think the immediate aim, as I've said to him, is we've got to try and get away from the trouble we're in. So all of our focus has to go into that. But I think there is a longer term um, project with, with Dale. And how impressed are you with that? further ambitions, even these comments to the website, it doesn't just mention this season, it's all about, about the future and beyond the season. Well. Yeah, well I suppose that's the that's the idea with the length of the contract really, because you know, we, we are in a precarious position, you know, make no bones about that. Um, so it is about the future, not just the next couple of months, um, but the next couple of months immediately are, are our sole focus. <clears throat> You've been out of the game since the summer. Have you missed it? Yeah, uh, of course. I mean, you know, the, being out of the game since the summer was, you know, that was that was my choice. I had another year left on my contract, you know, so um, things were changing uh, at my my last club at Shrewsbury, um, and so yeah, you know, things things weren't going to be. I suppose the same in terms of the structure there. So I think it was best to, to move on. It's different if you go into a club that has a sort of structure. Um, unless, of course, you go into a club with a structure where it's not performing so well. So, you know, there's lots of whys and wherefores that, that go on in football. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm very much a person who looks forward anyway. You know, I enjoyed my time at Shrewsbury just like I did in all my other clubs. Um, and uh, now I'm looking forward to a new chapter in my life. What does it mean to you to be working in the West Country? Yeah, well, obviously, you know, Cheltenham's my home. Um, you know, uh, living in Bristol now, managing Bristol City as well. You know, so um, that was that was obviously a big pull. You know, thinking it, it, it's more important, certainly as you get older going home to your own home every night and uh, you won't know that yet because you're too young but um, you know I've certainly had a, a long career and I've moved around a lot um, but there's I've still got that hunger and that desire to win um, so as long as I have that I'll be fine What does Steve Cockfield, the manager, look like, do you think? Um, what does he look like? Honest, hard-working. Um, impatient. I suppose the, the impatient bit is where, the, where, the, where my family will say that's where I am. I, I always want to get things done yesterday. Um, so, yeah, I'm a bit impatient with things like that, but I think that's, that's sometimes the drive in you. So, um, determined as well, that's uh, probably another. I'd, li I'd like to think knowledgeable now and experienced. So, you probably better end that question because I'm thinking of more and more words that I have to give you. I don't know that you might not want to give too much away, but fans will be wondering what's our team going to look like. So. What can they expect from the Steve Cottrell team? Well, you might not see one of them for a little while. I mean, hopefully we can get there as quick as possible, but, you know, uh, Dan's done, you know, a fair bit of the lead and the coaching, um, you know, leading up into to the weekend's game. It's obviously the first time I've met the boys this morning. So we've stepped in a couple of times this morning on a few points, 
Um, but I think the staff have, have, have done very well so far in this, I suppose you could call it an, almost an interim period. So, you know, well done to those guys. Um, and let's, let's just hope we can get off to a, you know, a good start. <clears throat> what have your early observations been? Has there already been a lot of homework going on and I suppose more to come as well? Yeah, I mean, I, I think probably because of um, the meetings that I've had this week, I wouldn't say there's been major homework. And I think some of the major homework you can do anyway, you know, you can do all your homework on a, on a player, but I don't know anywhere where you'll find out about their personality, whether they're brave. I don't think you'll find that anywhere. I don't think any stats will bring that up. So, you know, I think it, I'm just finding my way in on the job. Um, but I'm experienced enough to do that. And you're no stranger to this sort of situation where Forest Green find themselves at the minute, mm. drag teams out of it before. So how much do you sort of rely on those past experiences and, and believe in yourself? Yeah, always. Always you have to. You have to have that belief in yourself. Um, sometimes some things are out of your hands. Um, but what we have to be is we have to try and put a clear message out um, and send the players out on the pitch with a clear idea uh, every game as to what to expect um, and that that is what we've got to do you know is really get your head down and focus at this moment in time but but hopefully the experiences that I've had over the years of you know teams that are teams that are like down there struggling, you know, I've had that at Nottingham Forest, um, I certainly had that at Bristol City, Bristol City were looking at their second successive relegation when I went in there um, it was a little bit earlier than this time you know, there's not a lot of games here um, but um, what we've got to do is, is do our very best and sometimes your best looks like this, it looks like this, it looks like this it looks like this, it just depends on the situations you inherit sometimes we're at home this weekend against Appleton Stanley and the fans have suffered a lot over the last sort of 18 months or so. So what's your message to them ahead of the weekend and going forward? Uh, it, well, my message will only ever be going forward, you know, and, and, it, and it's hard to tell fans what to be like or how to be and all of that business because, you know, we're, we're in an entertainment business, that's what football is. So it's hard to tell them how to be, but, you know, just the, on, the only thing I would ask is just for them, like I would in any other club, for them to give the boys um, their backing, you know, uh, even in the smallest of uh, moments, you know, tackles, headers, all of those moments, and they're the minor things in the game, you know, we're, obviously they're all going to jump about, you score a goal, or you score goals, uh, so that one always happens anyway, that's a gimme, so um, just, to, just to really back the players, um, and they'll all have their favourites. All, all the crowd have favourites. You know, try and try and make the whole eleven and the substitutes bench and all that their favourites between now and the end of the season. Because you can't do it by yourself anyway. So you're always going to need your supporters behind you.